Hey folks, my name is Daniel and welcome back to the finance channel, more specifically the analysis series where I take you through an absolutely phenomenal research report by Keith Bruyette and Woods on Voyager Digital, a company involved in the crypto space that I'm personally invested in. And uh, in this video, we're going to focus on three main topics. First and foremost, international expansion and the potential this has to impact Voyager Digital's funded account growth and business model. We're also going to take a look at M&A, mergers and acquisitions, how this has helped Voyager, what we can expect from this moving forward, and even some of the negatives from it. And at the very end, we're going to go through the potential for Voyager to get acquired by another firm at some point in the future. So if you end up enjoying this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And uh, yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into the video here. So here we have it. Uh, let's just get right into it. International expansion represents opportunity to sustain high growth rates. I dropped my iPad. We're fine. <laughs> Voyager currently only operates in the US, although the company is actively seeking to expand its retail footprint in Canada and Europe once it is fully cleared to do so. Similar to the market share story in the US, we like the company's strategy to globalize the firm as it represents an opportunity to gain global market share. Once again, creating account growth that is relatively less tied to the industry growth as a whole. That's a big, big deal. Allowing yourself to essentially get forms of growth that aren't entirely correlated to cryptocurrencies and the price movement and interest that you see within the US based off of that. So again, expanding internationally, that diversifies their business model. And again, it's just a net positive for the business. So let's see what they think in terms of the potential impact this has on Voyager's business, more specifically in terms of funded accounts and uh, timelines as well. So Europe launch expen or rather expected throughout fiscal year 2022 with key regulatory or yeah with key regulatory approval already obtained that's a big deal in order to accelerate its expansion into Europe Voyager acquired an institutional crypto exchange LGO in December of 2020 LGO was already regulated as a virtual asset service provider by the AMF the Autorité des Marchés Financiers France's financial market regulator and one of the most prominent regulators in the EU. That's a big deal as, again, you have essentially the most prominent regulator within Europe and, uh, again, the European Union going out and saying, hey, we accept Voyager, you're all go. In October of 2021, the AMF then declared parent company Voyager Digital fit and proper to operate under the LGO registration. With full regulatory approval secured, Voyager is now building out its European operation in ahead of its impending launch. This is uh, rather this is a somewhat intense build out as Voyager has to effectively build a duplicate technology stack in the EU, partially driven by the need to ensure compliance with the EU's general data protection regulation. While Voyager is currently targeting a March 2022 launch, we know that the company has a long list of growth initiatives underway, and therefore, we wouldn't be surprised if timing here slipped slightly. So again, a lot of positives here. Europe is now a question of, you know, not, not even a, it, it kind of went from a question of if to a question of when to now a question of, all right, it's within a few weeks of March, or that's kind of the understanding that I have. The original timeline that we got was March of 2022. Steve Ehrlich has said that they may be a little bit late on that, but either way, we can expect it at some point in 2022, probably within the first half, in my opinion. And yesterday, we just had... Um, a new presentation, a corporate presentation by Voyager. And we also got a just kind of, you know, talk of them being optimistic about Canada and a potential regulatory approval there within the first half of 2022 as well. So again, this is going to be a big scale in stage for Voyager. And I'm with no doubt looking forward to, again, seeing what they end up doing here, estimating the impact of a European launch. The total EU population is 447 million. 35% larger than the 330 million population of the US. However, we note that the US consumer base seems to be ahead of EU customer or consumers when it comes to enthusiasm and uptake of crypto. Over the past quarter, we estimate using Aptopia data that US customers may be responsible for nearly 2 to 3x 
the number of crypto native app downloads when compared to EU customers. And uh, that's excluding the UK, despite the EU having a larger population. So essentially what we're seeing here is just kind of a kind of reiteration that although Europe has, or the Union has a bigger population size than the US, the US is still a bigger market, which in my opinion is kind of expected. But in reality, I look at this as an opportunity, as it says that Europe as a whole still has yet to get into that major growth stage when it comes to cryptocurrencies. And it says that, hey, Voyager will probably be in Europe when that does end up happening. So again, if you're optimistic about cryptocurrencies, about crypto adoption, this right here and the fact that the US is significantly more involved than Europe in cryptocurrencies is a good thing. And again, we'll see what happens here moving forward, but I look at this as a, a big, big positive. So the initial app launch in the EU will certainly include a launch in France, but the AMF registration will also allow Voyager to launch across most of the EU via passporting. However, we expect the launch to likely be targeted in a few countries at first. In our view, within the EU, the most important countries for Voyager to launch in first in terms of population already showing a clear interest in crypto are Spain, Germany, Italy, and France. And do keep in mind that you know, they also talked about this in yesterday's presentation, which I may as well at this point leave linked in the description down below if you don't want to check it out. But they talked about Spain, Germany, Italy, France being first. Do keep that in mind. But they also said Netherlands. So again, we can expect France first, then moving on to these different countries here, and then obviously going to uh, the Netherlands as well, and then expanding throughout the remainder of the year as a bit of a like a scale and stage as it's such a huge market. And uh, anyways, these countries, which is generally unsurprising, given the size of these countries, using Aptopia data, we estimate that these four countries compare 55 to 60% of total crypto app downloads across the EU. That's a check bar right there, as again, it shows they're getting into the major markets and um, that that's kind of the biggest thing that we want, get in the major markets and build brand awareness. We are modeling a June 2022 EU launch and expecting Voyager to add 36,000 verified EU users per quarter in, uh, again, fiscal year 2023, with this increasing to 73,000 rather uh, per quarter in, fi or in, yeah, in fiscal year 2024. So, okay, we expect the EU to comprise 6.2% of Voyager's total verified users and a roughly similar percentage of funded accounts by year end 2024. So, okay, this is interesting. And I would love to see a bit of a comparison here between their, uh, their US projections and Europe projections, which they do give later in the report. But I think this is a reasonable, if not conservative estimate. Again, looking at this 36,000 figure, I, I, I strongly do believe if they do end up expanding into so many countries, this number will be bigger. And you know, we do have to understand that we don't have that much data when it comes to Europe at this point in time with cryptocurrency firms. So a lot of it is up in the air. But when I look at Europe, I see a very, very similar opportunity with what Voyager has in the United States. It's just the fact that you're adding on an additional market with potentially the same size. So you're opening up your total addressable market in a major, major way in a place that has yet to really recognize cryptocurrencies. So you know, we'll see what ends up happening here. I personally do believe this may be a little bit conservative here with the 6.2% of total verified users. But again, keep in mind, they have a head start in the US and it may take time to, uh, to grow out Europe and build that brand awareness. Uh, and I'm going to move my uh, face here. So you end up seeing uh, the Canadian part here. Um, Canada launch likely to come after EU launch. Voyager has also filed for exemptive relief within the Ontario Securities Commission, which would enable Voyager to launch its offering across Canada, not just Ontario. With Canada having a population of just under 40 million, this would expand Voyager's addressable market by just about 12% versus where it currently operates today. Nice bump. In the US, excluding New York State, from a Voyager download perspective, we estimate using Aptopia data uh, that crypto native app downloads in Canada have been roughly 6% of US downloads. So again, it is a smaller market as well. You know, it, kind of what we're getting from this report is the sense that 
a lot of these international markets have not been explored as significantly as the U.S. has. And given Voyager's success within the U.S., I think that sets them up very nicely to take significant market share in additional countries within Europe and North America, like Canada. So here we have it here. Uh, so Canada, like Europe, under indexes when compared to the U.S., where customers have been more receptive and shown more interest in crypto than most other regions. We are modeling a June 2022 Canada launch. Interesting how they're kind of bundling it together. Europe will be first. Canada, I think that may be a little bit optimistic, but obviously uh, I'm fine with a Canadian launch in June. That would be great. Uh, and are expecting Voyager to add 7,000 accounts per quarter in, uh, in fiscal 2023. So that is smaller, but that's okay. Let's keep going here. And that increasing to 15,000 in, uh, in in fiscal year 2024, and they expect it to comprise just about 1.3% of verified users and a similar percentage of funded accounts by year end 2024. So, okay, again, I also think they're underestimating this a little bit, but we do have to understand we don't really know yet at this point. There, you know, Voyager is such a unique platform, and it's all going to depend on their marketing, their brand awareness, and how much emphasis they put with on within Canada. So. You know, I'm, I'm looking at all of this and I'm saying, you know, these are great baseline estimates, but I, I, I think Voyager can over exceed this. And uh, again, it, it all depends. But again, given the team that they have, given the product that they have and the unique offering that they present, I, I, I do believe they're going to make a killing over in Canada and Europe. So obviously those are big markets. And then uh, New York State, which may be, you know, kind of it is actually bigger than Canada in terms of a potential opportunity and you know th this is one that we've been waiting for for quite some time uh, New York bit license likely to be granted but timing is uncertain in the US the company has been working closely with New York Department of Financial Services the NYDFS to obtain a bit license as New York State residents or NY State rather uh, residents can currently download the Voyager app but cannot formally open or fund an account there have been uh, only uh, been three virtual currency and money transmitter licenses <laughs> issued by the NYDFS since the beginning of 2020. Obviously, that is um, not a good thing. Eris Clearing, which is not retail facing. PayPal, which is using conditional approval via Paxos, already uh, approved by NYDFS and backed. It's another public company. Uh, you can actually search up their stock if you want. <laughs> um, but anyways, we expect Voyager to receive a bit license at some point. Although timing is less certain, we wouldn't be surprised if this came at some point after Voyager's European launch, targeted for, uh, again, 2022. So, you know, you look at this, it's a lot of yellow. It's a lot of uncertainty, and it's a lot of Voyager just having to wait. So, again, when I'm just looking at this, I'm saying, you know, just take your time. And why? Obviously, it would be great or... To, to have it now, but everyone's facing this issue and, you know, there's nothing Voyager can do about it. Let's keep going on here. Estimating the impact of an NY state launch, this would obviously be big. New York state residents represent approximately 6% of the U.S. population. That's a big deal. New York state crypto users likely have already opened accounts using other crypto exchange apps already approved by the NYDFS. Coinbase, Gemini, or others are already for fully operational in the state. However, Voyager already has a wait list of New York residents that could create a small wave of new account growth once the bit license is opened or obtained. Overall, the larger impact for Voyager over the medium term will likely be more related to the company being able to capture market share of future new app downloads from New York residents, many of which may be new to crypto altogether. Out of uh, conservatism, we are not... Yeah, sorry, conservativism. <laughs> we are not currently explicitly modeling new account growth directly related to Voyager receiving a bit license. However, this could effectively impact Voyager's U.S. market share. And we uh, show a broader sensitivity related to the market share of new downloads later in this report in Exhibit 19. So, okay, that's good. That's good. They're not including New York. I think that's what they should do as... Again, this is very uncertain. It's not up to Voyager, and it's been a big, big pain for crypto companies up until this point. Putting it all together, we are assuming Voyager launches in both Europe and Canada 
by the end of the fourth quarter of 2022, or June end. This is their fiscal year. Keep in mind, their fiscal year is six months ahead of the normal fiscal year. So that's, that's with no doubt a, you know, a, a very bold claim to make. And uh, again, conservatively, we are not baking in explicit assumptions for New York State. It's very likely that the EU and Canadian launches will be instead staggered. But the impact of pushing back the Canadian launch a quarter or two in our model would be minimal. Again, Canada is a smaller market. We have to understand that. We also think it's logical for Voyager to continue to expand internationally beyond this. And uh, we see the UK as an opportunity uh, by fiscal year 2024. So that's mid-2023. Uh, or yeah, mid-2023. Although we are not modeling this yet, shown in the sensitivity below, we first make assumptions on industry-wide new crypto uh, verified users by geography. I'm going to move up my face. Then make Voyager-specific market share assumptions for each of these uh, geographies. As we will discuss later in this report, the absolute number of crypto app downloads um, and new verified users industry-wide can be volatile and fluctuate significantly quarter over quarter. We are attempting to make relatively conservative assumptions for industry-wide new, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, new verified users, but this could uh, change abruptly with a prolonged pullback, or conversely, with an increase in crypto prices. With respect to market share, we expect Voyager's international market share to initially be much lower than the U.S., at least until brand awareness is increased, our base case assumes 7.5% of Voyager's total verified users will come from the EU and Canada, uh, again, by year end 2024. So that's, that's being conservative. However, if Voyager is able to take higher share of new crypto uh, user growth, uh, we can assume roughly 13.5%. Um, so that's kind of the more bullish case, per se. And uh, just to kind of put this all into uh, a bit of a more visual format for you all, again, and I'm gonna just shrink this. We can see uh, their low, their base case, and their high case when it comes to potential verified users added. And uh, okay, we have Canadian launches, and kind of the big deal you see here is their assumptions for um, obviously verified users and the mix of that. And uh, obviously based off of these assumptions, which include, in this case, 7% market share in Canada, 3.4% market share, 0%, 0%, 2.6%, 5%. So these are with no doubt very low. Currently in the US, Voyager has roughly 10% of all new crypto app downloads. That's, that's a huge number. So if they manage to just get around 5%, that can impact things significantly to a point where, uh, again, by the fourth quarter of 2024, or kind of mid-2023 in this case, you could be seeing upwards of around 10% of Voyager's verified users being from Europe, which obviously that's a big, big positive. Canada is not as big and probably won't be, to be completely honest. But again, it's great to see this company expanding internationally viewing new opportunities and taking them very seriously. So next topic on the list here, mergers and acquisitions is this a positive, a negative for Voyager's business. Let's take a look. We believe we are in the early phases of industry consolidation. Voyager may accelerate expansion via M&A, but also could be an attractive acquisition target. Fascinating. There have been a long track record of M&A in the retail brokerage and exchange sectors, with both of these industries now having almost entirely consolidated in the U.S. with a few exceptions. M&A has been a powerful and attractive tool for customers or companies rather in these industries because they are scale businesses with a high degree of fixed costs. For exchanges and retail brokers, the possibility of migrating customers' flow from two platforms to one typically yields, number one, significant cost synergies with a high degree of visibility, that's big, and number two, limited revenue dis-synergies or customer attrition. So you look at these two things that they're pointing to, a lot of cost synergies, so something like potentially acquiring a staking company, for example, or you know, a company like Coinify, which focuses in on, um, uh, again, converting money into cryptocurrency, things like that, have an opportunity to limit the amount of third parties that Voyager works with and to do a lot of things in-house, which limits a lot of expenses, allows you to take in additional revenue and build profits. 
You also take a look at this right here, limited revenue to synergies or customer attrition. So again, I just talked about revenues, but again, when it comes to customers, it's great for them to be able to do everything on one platform as that build tr builds trust and builds customer relationships, which is, which is what you want at the end of the day. These two attributes have combined to make M&A incredibly attractive in these industries. And we expect that the crypto brokerage slash exchange sector will experience a similar type of consolidation trend over the medium term. Today, the crypto industry is incredibly fragmented and likely in the very early innings of consolidation. We expect operators in this crypto space or sector to attempt to gain scale rapidly and also look to expand into new geographies or product verticals over time. So they view this as a positive and, you know, obviously it does have its positives and its negatives, but, you know, kind of the biggest deal is how much are they paying and is it a one plus one equals three, four, five situation where they're getting their money back and more over time for uh, whatever company they end up acquiring. So you look at something like Coinify, obviously it would have been better for them to just do everything in house and not spend a hundred million dollars. But at the end of the day, you're acquiring a company, you're acquiring people with experience and that significantly increases your ability to, when you kind of look at the, in a broad scheme of things to speed things up and connect Voyager's brand to Coinify's brand and really, really increase the potential of that within the United States, new markets, and to build it into a company at some point generating hundreds of millions of dollars in revenues. So again, that's kind of their thoughts on that. Uh, we believe that Voyager's status as a publicly traded listed company positions it well as an acquirer while also being small enough to maintain takeout optionality. On one hand, Voyager has enough scale to be cash generative, readily raise capital and utilize liquid publicly listed equity as a deal consideration, as a distinct advantage for Voyager, which is one of only a handful of publicly listed companies in, the North, in North America, or crypto companies. However, Voyager is small on a relative basis when compared to several crypto platforms and globally. Uh, and therefore, investors will naturally view Voyager as a potential takeout target. To further this point, there are now 64 crypto unicorns globally per the block, many of which are valued above Voyager's $1.9 billion enterprise value. A non-exhaustive list of crypto companies, both public and private, with a larger market cap than Voyager can be found in Exhibit A, which we'll take a look at. We also note that other traditional finance players may eventually view Voyager as a target, especially if Voyager continues to expand its, tra er, its trading offering into traditional markets and launches other finance offerings such as traditional fiat lending, where there is more direct overlap with traditional players. Ultimately, many traditional brokers may choose to build a crypto offering organically or partner with a third party provider such as Paxos as uh, uh, again, interactive brokers did. This builds versus, uh, or sorry, this build versus buy strategic discussion is one that traditional brokers will likely have over the coming years, especially as the crypto regulatory framework firms up. So what they're essentially saying here is that the Voyager's in a good spot to where a lot of these more traditional companies as crypto expands uh, and as the industry expands, those companies may choose to buy Voyager given their size, and given the platform that they have and expanding into different product offerings, more traditional financial topics and you know offerings really positions them very, very well to get taken out by a company like this, which I know a lot of people view it as a negative. Um, but, you know, if a company does end up acquiring Voyager, it's going to be at a significant markup given their size. So you could very well see a 50, 100 percent gain in Voyager in a matter of days, which is obviously a, a, a good thing. And then, you know, we have to figure out where to go elsewhere. So, you know, it's a bit of a bitter, bittersweet feeling when it comes to a uh, potential acquisition. But Steve Ehrlich has said in the past that he has no plans of uh, kind of selling Voyager. And if he does, it would have to be a very intriguing deal to where all shareholders, no matter if he bought at $10 or $25 are happy. Now, um, one more thing here before we take a look at, it. Uh, again, the potential Voyager has to get acquired. M&A environment slightly challenging at the moment, but this will change eventually. 
It's important to note that 2021 represented a banner year for crypto with extremely strong price performance, record crypto app download activity, and record user engagement. To further that point, we think 2021 generated more than 60 million new verified crypto users in the U.S. alone. And we estimate that crypto native app downloads in the U.S. may end up being nearly 10x in 2021 versus 2020 levels. That's huge. With such strong industry tailwinds, we would not be surprised if buyer and seller expectations are still relatively far apart. This makes sense as companies need to evaluate any potential sale relative to the alternative of staying independent and growing at a currently rapid pace. The bottom line is that it may take a more prolonged crypto downturn to facilitate a more material wave of consolidation across the industry to make more acquisitions, crypto prices fall, pessimism enters the space, and Voyager is able to scoop up companies at a ridiculous deal. That's essentially what they're saying. We aren't saying that there won't be opportunities for Voyager to add valuable assets in this type of environment, especially if its own valuation improves as it has more valuable equity to use for deal consideration. However, some of the largest or larger scale related <laughs> however, some of the larger scale related opportunities may come in more challenging environments. However, some of the larger scale related opportunities may come in a more challenging environment. Therefore, it may make sense for Voyager to build cash on its balance sheet organically or through opportunistic raises. We believe Voyager's largest competitor, Coinbase, has taken this approach and is currently building a cash war chest for M&A ahead of any softness that may lead to more seller capitulation. So again, that's just kind of reiterating my point that Voyager may have a significant opportunity throughout 2022, 2023, 2024, if we do see a crypto downturn to acquire companies for cheap and then build them up throughout that time in uh, preparation for the next bull market. So that's obviously uh, assuming that we do see a crypto downturn, which people do have mixed opinions about. Obviously, it's a market, it trades, it goes through bull markets, bear markets. It probably will happen eventually, and it's important for Voyager to have that war chest to, again, not just acquire companies, but again, in the grand scheme of things, be able to continue operating. They're a big company at this point, and they're going to need capital to potentially operate at a loss throughout that time. So do keep that in mind. Near term, we expect Voyager to be uh, more of a buyer than a seller, partially due to evidence that it's clearly taking market share with its value prop er, proposition resonating with consumers. In addition, to the significant organic opportunities ahead, such as international expansion, as we laid out previously. Therefore, Voyager shareholders should instead view the possibility of a takeout as providing some downside protection in shares or even some free or low cost sale optionality. As we don't think there is a measurable takeout premium embedded in the share price today. Interesting. So they're saying that Voyager should almost have this kind of base price given where they're at where you know there's a certain amount of premium embedded into the stock based off of the assumption that if it went any lower than that, Voyager would get taken out by a, a larger target. And that presents a bit of a kind of opportunity there to, again, limit downside risk. So that's a fascinating way to put it. They have a large opportunity to, uh, again, monetize the users that they have, over 3 million verified users, over a million funded accounts. So that has a lot of value. And at under a $2 billion valuation, I think they're in a pretty good spot. So again, we'll see there. Uh, here's, you know, this chart's absolutely fascinating here, and I'm just going to move... Uh, move my face over. But uh, again, here we have it right here. Voyager has historically used mostly equity to fund deals and we expect more deal activity ahead. So these are the different acquisitions um, that they have had in the past. You know, just a bit of cash for Coinify here, a lot of shares. So do keep that in mind. But when you look at them potentially getting taken out, look at all of these companies that have larger valuations than Voyager. You know, th there's a lot of opportunity here. It, it, you know, these are just the cryptocurrency related companies. What about what about the traditional financial companies who are not yet into the crypto space? It is with no doubt attractive for them to acquire Voyager. I mean, they're probably the biggest deal on this list from a valuation standpoint based off of how many users they have. So, you know, I'm just kind of looking at all of this in the grand scheme of things. And I'm saying, you know, th there is opportunity here. 
and I, especially with them being publicly traded, I, I think that opens up the opportunity for a potential takeout, which, you know, it could happen, it couldn't, but it's a situation we need to prepare ourselves for. And here we have a list of uh, historical M&A in the exchange and brokerage space. And just the trend you've seen here, and I think we should focus more on these, is a lot of these legacy companies acquiring here on the left. And that essentially kind of resulting in significant synergies and reductions in expenses. So at the end of the day, it becomes a positive for these companies to even pay a major premium for a company like Voyager if it means that they get immediate exposure to the crypto space without having to spend any money on research and development, hiring individuals, which can become a painful, lengthy process, just getting it all done, you know, just through a simple merger makes it much, much easier. So when I'm looking at the opportunity here of a potential acquisition, I'm saying, all right, it has potential, but uh, again, I don't think it is something that will happen, but it's something that is a flat out positive for Voyager's share price as they reduce risk in a stock and a business and generally are things that uh, Wall Street views a little bit more positively. So anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I know we went a little bit, little bit long today, but obviously a lot of things that we did end up covering. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts were. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for episode number three coming at some point over uh, the next little while. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.